<clears throat> All right, so what we're going to do in this uh, short little video is finish up what we were talking about in uh, class last time, um, section 1.3. And in section 1.3, remember, we talked about the uh, infinite sets. We defined infinite as being not finite. In order to be finite, you had to be able to map the set of natural numbers up through some number n um, onto a, um, a set. It had to be not only onto, but one-to-one. -one. So this bijection exists from... Um, Some bijection at being it exists from this natural the set of natural numbers up to some number n. That's the set one, two, up to n. In a one-to-one -one and onto way onto that, that set. That means that A is finite. Okay? Now any set for which no such bijection exists is called an infinite set. Now we, we did a lot of discussion last time about uh, some different properties of infinite sets, but now what we're going to talk about is a very important concept um, throughout the rest of this semester, and it has to do with what's called countability, or countable sets. So let me begin by defining for you a few terms that will be important. First of all, I want to define something called denumerable, okay? A set is said to be denumerable, D-E-N-U-M-E-R-A-B-L-E, -E um, or, um, and this is the, the, the language or terminology I will probably use more often, but the book uses denumerable, so I want you to be familiar with it. I will refer to something as countably infinite, and it'll become more clear what I mean by countable with the next definition. Okay, but denumerable sets are infinite, okay, but they're a special kind of infinite. That means there exists a bijection of the natural numbers onto the set S, okay? In fact, let me write S here. A set S is said to be denumerable if there exists a bijection of the entire natural numbers onto S, okay? So... Essentially, what we're saying is we can take and map the natural numbers, which you'll know are 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on without end, and be able to map that to some element of S. Now, normally we call it S sub 1, S sub 2, S sub 3, S sub 4. This denumerable gets its name from the fact that you are enumerating, enumerating the set. That is, you're assigning one element to be the first element the second element, third element, fourth element, and so on. So you can essentially list out all of the elements, and as long as you continue in this pattern, dot, dot, dot means continue on in the same way, then you'll cover the entire set. You'll have every element of the set in there. That's what it means to be denumerable. Now, uh, we'll use the word countable then to refer to any set that is either denumerable or finite. So a countable set, or a set S, is countable if it is finite or denumerable. So countable sets can be finite. That is, if, if you can count up the total number of elements in the set and be done, that's countable. But also, if it is denumerable or countably infinite, meaning you can start counting them and then basically do the dot, 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 and it continues on in the same way, then that's what we will call um, a countable set. And so this is very, very important, um, and we will come back to it over and over again. Now, other sets, a set S is uncountable if obviously is not countable. That's all that means. Now, we're going to talk a little bit more about are there such sets even out there? We haven't even discussed if there's an infinite set for which we can't find a bijection. Now, because I'm defining it, you can probably uh, surmise there's going to be one, but nonetheless, we, uh, we define it now and we'll come back to which sets might be uh, uncountable later on. Let's think of a couple of examples of sets that would be countably infinite or denumerable. Okay, so first of all, 
obviously that set right there is countable or denumerable. It's denumerable because it's infinite. It's countable because it is denumerable, right? Um, maybe it helps to see this kind of picture here. If I were to make a set of all um, countable sets and make a set of all infinite sets, what's up here is finite, what's in here is denumerable, and what's out here is uncountable. Okay, so that's the relationship of those terms. All right, now, another one that turns out to be countable, and it's obvious from the definition because it won't be hard to figure out what the mapping is. Let's say E is the set of all these guys. Okay, so E is the set of all numbers that are of the form 2n, where n is a natural number. So what's that set? That set is obviously the evens. Okay, I claim the evens are a denumerable set. Obviously, they're infinite, but they're denumerable because this right here, this function 2n, is a bijection. Or bijection from the natural numbers on to e. Right? It's one-to-one -one because this gives you a unique output. That is, you plug in a natural number. Uh, no two natural numbers will map to the same um, element of E. And um, it's onto because every even number can be written in this form. So that's the bijection. Another way to think of um, denumerable sets is if you can start listing them, as I did here, and then basically say that I'm going to continue on the same pattern, and you can verify or prove that every element of the set is then listed, then you're, um, you're done. You've proved that it's denumerable. For example, E is 2, 4, 6, 8. Okay? And you got to be careful, but sometimes you can assume that it's going to continue on and catch everything, but it may not. I'll give you an example of that later on. But in this case, it's pretty clear. I call that my first element. I call that my second element. I call that my third element. I call that my fourth element. And that will cover the entire set. That is, every element of E is going to eventually get listed as, a, as, as I continue on in this pattern. That makes it denumerable. You can almost think of countable as listable. If you can start a list that then covers the entire set. Um, where things get a little bit tricky is that sometimes it may not look like you can come up with a list, but in fact you can by being creative. And I think I've got enough space down here to do this one. Consider this set right here. N cross N. Now, N cross N, remember, is a, a Cartesian product. A Cartesian product means it's the set of all ordered pairs A, B, such that A and B are both natural numbers, since my first and second set are both um, N. Now, what does that look like as a set? It's a set of points, right? But more specifically, I could illustrate these on, say, a graph. Let's say that's one, two, three, four, five, one, two. And of course that continues on up. This point right here is one comma one, that's in the set. One comma, or two comma one's in the set. Three comma one, four comma one, five comma one, dot, dot, dot. Um, two comma one, sorry, one comma two, 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 three, two, four, two, five, two. And I'm gonna stop on this row here. And what I need to do is basically list out all of these elements. Now, we're, if I started, for example, right, uh, let's say I started right here. One, two, three, four, five. But I got to keep going all the way out to say that I've got all the elements of this row before I start on the next row. And since this has to go on forever, I don't, I won't ever finish this line before I come back up here and start counting again. So I couldn't list all the elements by going row-wise. I also couldn't list them by going column-wise, this first element, second, third, fourth, and so on up, because I'd never get to start back over on the other one. What I've got to come up with a way of doing is listing these points in an order and in a pattern so that I will end up collecting all of the points if I continue on in that pattern. Okay, And uh, the, uh, the trick is what's called a diagonalization um, approach. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go along these diagonals. 
call that my first point, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth. I'm mapping again the natural numbers, these one, two, three, four, five, onto the entire set. I never count a, a number twice, and I am one to one. Uh, sorry, I never count the same number twice. That means I am one to one, and I'm on to, meaning that if I keep doing this diagonalization, I will eventually reach every point. Not eventually. If I carry it on to infinity, that covers the entire set here. And so that set is, in that sense, denumerable. Is denumerable. I probably should have written that up here. E is denumerable. It's countable. Also, I mean, later on, by the time we get to chapter 2 and on, I probably won't use this word very much anymore. I'll just talk about countable sets. And countable sets include, remember, finite and infinitely countable, or countably infinite sets. But uh, I'll start using this word a whole lot more, so I just want to make sure you're familiar with that. Okay, I'm going to pause there, erase the board, and start again.